All right, everyone. So for our first day of social media, we've got three weeks to work with. We've got three networks to learn about because I could talk about each of the networks on its own for days, for hours. There's just so much to learn about all of these networks. We have three and a half hours per day and we'll be, we'll be focusing on one network at a time. So the three that we're going to focus on this part of the class is uh, Google+, Twitter, and Facebook. Go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Open up any web browser you'd like, Internet Explorer, Safari, whatever, they're all here. I'm going to open Firefox. Open your web browser. And let's go to this address. HTTP colon slash slash google.com slash plus, the plus symbol, Mashable, M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E, Mashable, google.com slash plus Mashable. This is the web address of a website called Mashable. They have their own website, Mashable.com. Make a note that Mashable.com is a great website that you should be looking at on a regular basis to keep up with social media, technology, etc. Mashable.com. They, like many other businesses and such, have a presence on social media. Because if you take my search engine optimization class, one of the things we talk about in there is, in order to be found by Google, Yahoo, Bing, the search engines, in order to be found by the search engines, you need to be, you need to have a, a strong online presence. It's sort of a catch-22. How do I get found by a search engine? Well, have an online presence. How do I build an online presence? Get found by the search engines. Well, social media helps you break that loop because social media helps you create content that the search engines find. So Mashable, if you go to their Google Plus account, we're first going to look at the Google Plus profile. Google.com slash plus Mashable. You're going to see that this is reminiscent of other social networks you might have seen in that there is there are posts this one was uploaded one hour ago three hours ago five hours ago six hours ago nine hours ago in one day several posts have been published one two three four five just today yesterday there was one two three four five etc. So they're publishing content on a regular basis on Google+. There's some branding at the top here. This uh, graphic, this logo, the name of the company, and then a stat right here, statistic. 5.5 million followers. They have five and a half million followers on Mashable. They have viewers, they have people paying attention on Mashable. Now they've got their own, I mean on Google Plus, now they've got their own website of course, Mashable.com, but they've not everyone com comes back to visit Mashable.com all the time. They may instead check out what are they publishing, what are they posting on Google Plus, what are they posting on Facebook, what are they posting on Snapchat, Instagram, etc., 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 all the social networks. So here, a lot of followers, you could say, a lot of viewers, a lot of people interested in them on Google+. And so let's compare that with the other social network we'll be talking about. I'm going to open a new tab, and I'm going to type uh, the address HTTP, twitter.com slash Mashable. Let's compare and contrast the Mashable account on Twitter with the Mashable account on Google+. Twitter.com slash Mashable. M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E. Let's see here. Twitter.com slash Mashable. It's going to load up their profile. Graphics to brand it, 
little bit of explanatory text on the left, tweets, statistics, 6.8 million followers. So we've got lots of people paying attention to Mashable on Twitter. In a sense, you could say subscribed to them on Twitter, subscribed to them on Google+, subscribed to them on Facebook, in a sense. They're paying attention to them, they're following them. 34 minutes ago, this was posted, Saturn's icy crescent moon. And then eight, uh, 48 minutes ago, that was posted. One hour ago, one hour ago, one hour ago, two hours ago, etc. So lots of tweets, lots of content being published, being posted on Twitter. Lastly, let's compare Mashable's online presence on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Mashable. They're consistent in all of their um, all of their online presence names. That's something for you to think about because the thing about social media is that it's immediate, lots of people use it, and therefore I might have had a business, I might have had a family business for 20 years, and I'm thinking, well, it's time to get on Twitter now. And I go try to claim Mike's Pizza on Twitter. It was probably taken 10 years ago. Twitter's been around almost 10 years. Facebook's been around 10 years. Google Plus has been around probably 4 or 5 years. These networks have been around a while especially the big famous ones, even the smaller ones. Snapchat hasn't been around that long, but that's very popular. And so the point I'm getting at is if you haven't claimed your names on the social networks, when we do it together, perhaps it might be taken. Hopefully it's not taken, but we'll get to that. Let's check out the Facebook.com Mashable page. 3.2 million likes. Now they have a different term. They had followers over on Twitter, and they had followers on Google+. On Facebook they have likes, but the same sort of concept. 3.2 million followers. 3.2 million people paying attention on Mashable, which how many of you are surprised that Mashable has less followers on Facebook than the others, the other networks? And so, same sort of thing. Um, five hours ago, this was posted. 24 minutes ago, that was posted. 54 minutes ago. Is it the exact same content? Let's compare. I'm seeing this article about that those hoverboards. Apparently, one caught on fire yeah. on Mashable. Facebook, do you see that same tweet? Change your content. Looks like they changed their content. They're not posting the exact same content on all of those networks. That's something to make a note of. As a beginner, it is valuable to be using as many networks as possible. Yes, but that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to be up to date on Twitter and Google Plus and Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and Sue.co and Rabadaba and Snapchat and all of these ones that you haven't heard of. It's useful to be active on all of them because that's how you build this presence that the search engines can find and therefore rank you well when someone searches pizza in San Diego. Maybe Mike's Pizza has been around a while but they're not very active on Google Plus or Twitter and such. But I am. Every day I'm posting something about my Mike's Pizza and perhaps that will then help me to get found compared to my competitor because they're not active on social media. So that's the big idea about social media for business. You're going to use social media as a marketing tool, as an advertising tool, as a tool to get more attention and followers and traffic. That's the big idea of using social media. And so in this class in three weeks, we'll be talking about these three networks, how to set up the accounts, how to um, use them effectively, how to get followers, how to get traffic, and such.
Any questions so far? Okay, so the network we're going to talk about today uh, first is Google+. Plus. Um, let's raise our hands. How many of you have heard of Facebook before today? Trick question. Everyone has, right? How many of you have heard of uh, Twitter before today? Okay. How many of you have heard of Google Plus before today? Most people. Google Plus is the newer of the three networks. I believe it debuted in 2012. We can look it up, but I believe it debuted in 2012. And Google Plus has traditionally been very integrated with Google Search, the biggest search engine in the world. So when someone is on Google searching, or not even consciously on Google, but just searching, the content on Google Plus could show up oh, and take precedence over the other competing networks. Um, Google searches, even though they deny it, cynically, you have to believe Google Plus content could take precedence over Facebook content, simply because they are rival networks, they are um, owned by different companies, the Google company, the Facebook company. And so if we set up Google Plus and our competitor doesn't, we might have an advantage. They may be on Twitter and Facebook, but they're never on Google Plus. And so if we're on Google Plus and our competitor is not, that could give us an advantage. So we'll be talking about setting up an account on Google Plus right now. The other aspect of setting up, the other reason why we might set up a Google Plus account is that's also tied to the Google Local. Have you ever searched on Google or on your phone and you're searching for pizza? And then on your phone, it's pretty useful because your phone has your GPS, and therefore when you search pizza, it's not going to give you a result of New York. It's going to give you a result of San Diego or wherever you're at. Well, that result that shows up may be coming from a Google Plus account. So that's another reason for us to set up a Google Plus profile. I think that one's going to be okay. That, I think that one's going to be okay if... if I think that one's going to be okay if you do sit there, ma'am. It's, it's going to be okay. Okay, go ahead and have a seat, please. Um, so that's why we want to set up a um, Google Plus account. Uh, it's tied to Google Search, it's tied to Google Local, and so forth. So what we'll do is, let's go to this web address. Let's go to HTTP colon slash slash plus dot google dot com. This is the login screen. How many of you currently have a Gmail email address? Okay, if you have a Gmail address, we'll be able to access Google Plus really fast because it's all tied together. Google search, Gmail, Google Plus, YouTube, it's all the same company. So we'll be able to log in with your Gmail. If you don't have Gmail, that's okay. We'll be able to create an account for free and access this. So let's go to plus.google.com. You might get something about featured collections. Just click Let's Go. As we set up the profile and use it and such, we'll talk about various aspects. Collections is a very cool feature that Google Plus has that the other networks don't, which, as we'll see later, is a way for us to get more followers, traffic, and so forth. The other networks don't have something like this. But we'll get to what that is later. On the top right corner, go ahead and click Sign In. One account, all of Google, sign in with your Google account. So if you've got a Gmail account, we're going to use that. If you don't have one, you can create one. If you've already got a Gmail, but you say, I don't want to mix my personal Gmail with my business Gmail, that's fine. Then you can create a new account for business. But before you do that, one thing about Google is that you can have a personal or business profile. 
they can both be tied together to one login for convenience, or you can separate them. So you just have to decide, are you going to use your existing Gmail address or create a new one? We're going to take a moment, maybe one or two minutes or so. You either log in or create an account. Try this on your own. And once we proceed after the screen, I'll show you the rest. So let's take a moment. Everyone should try to log in. Let's see how it goes. It just teaches the class at nine. Yes, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, it's Try to log in or create the account. You might ask you a question perhaps about update or upgrading your account. You can do that if you like. If you reach, if you reach any snag, we will still call me over. We just want to make sure we're all able to log in. Thank you. 
foreground is uh, is three dimensional. And the foreground is one that's uh, is uh, two dimensions. And then we scroll down to the bottom. All right, everyone, I'm going to go on in just a moment. Any final questions before I go on? Raise your hand. We're about to go on. All right, if you haven't quite gotten it, that's okay. We're going to take a break soon and we'll catch you up, but I need to move on. So this is the thing that's uh, a little um, difficult in teaching this in that it's a little different for everyone. Uh, you logged in in different ways. It might look a little bit different, so that's why I just wanted you to have, for you to try to log in and then we'll proceed. Here's the other difficulty, which happened very recently. Google revamped their design a little bit. The companies change things once in a while. You know, when Facebook changes things, everyone freaks out and hates Facebook and then forget about it a few days later. Same thing with all these networks, Twitter, Google Plus, they change their interface. If you've used these networks before and suddenly things change, you don't like it. But if you're brand new, you never knew it changed. Therefore, my screen might look a little different than yours. So let me just get a show of hands to see how yours looks. Raise your hand if your screen looks something like mine, where at the top left corner you have a little button that might say collections, but it opens up when you put your mouse on it. That's one version of it. How many of you have it something like that? Okay, how many of you have it so that this thing is already open on a gray bar on the left? Those of you that have the gray bar already open on the left, you seem to have the new version of Google+. Plus. It seems that most of us have the classic one, which is the drop-down menu. If you have the gray bar at the left, you're the newer one. I don't have the newer one at the moment. So uh, make sure to raise your hand and stop me if you get confused, because it looks like we've got two different views, some of us. Eventually, everyone will have the same gray bar on the left, but at the moment, it seems that it's kind of a mixture. Um, do you see, okay, if you've got the bar on the left, well, let me just look over someone's shoulder that has the gray bar. Who has the gray bar so I can see that? Yeah. So, either way, you, if you don't have if you've got the gray bar version, you see home, you see communities, you see collections. My version uh, has the drop down button, and if you put your mouse on the drop down, then it pops open. Put your mouse on it, and then you'll see home, collections, communities, etc. So, is everyone sort of seeing that? So, we'll be exploring the the different aspects of Google Plus and the most important aspects for business purposes in a moment, but I want to touch on 
a very important concept. At the very top right corner, at the very top right, I already have my icon, so it's got my picture, but on yours it just probably has a, a little letter, right? Like the letter of your first name, perhaps. Click on that little circle icon on the top right corner if it's only got a letter, click on it. And notice what pops up here on mine. It shows my email address, and it shows this. Google Plus page, Google Plus page, Google Plus page, Google Plus page. I, as I said, I teach these classes and such, but I also am part of a company where we do social media for companies. Google Plus allows us to create an account and then create multiple Google Plus pages to manage multiple businesses. So me, that I mean, that one of my jobs is social media marketer, I have my personal account where I connect with friends and family and see other stuff that I like, and then I have access to manage accounts of different businesses that I have contracts with. So these, let's say, Google Plus page are business pages. When I logged in a moment ago, probably when you logged in, you have your Google Plus profile. Profile and page is technically different. It's a personal profile and a business page. On yours, you probably don't have any business pages yet. That's what we're going to talk about, because you don't need to use Google Plus as a personal profile. You probably don't want to. That's what Facebook is for, perhaps. We're going to use Google Plus for business. So at the top right corner is where you can switch between your accounts. If you've already got business pages you created, that's how you access them. You click on your personal icon, and then you click your business page, and then you go off to manage it and work on it. But if you're brand new, you don't have any pages yet. Let's talk about creating a page. Do you see a button that says uh, add your Google Plus pages? Does everyone see that? No? Add account. Add account. Hmm. Let me see. Don't click on that yet. What does an account do? Um, no, I don't think that's going to be it. Okay, what about on the top left menu? If you hover over the menu there, do you see pages? Yes. No. Not on the gray one. Okay, if you do see pages, click on pages. We'll be there in a moment. If you have the gray interface, Is that the new view? Yeah, on the new view. It's um, if you go to your picture, you click on it, it says all your Google pages. And if you click here, not everyone seems to have Because that's the new view. And then right here you have a picture. Yeah, um, this is the new Google, that's why. So you click the same thing? Let's see what I Well, that's because I'm already on pages. Yeah, let's go back to your personal one. So you click it here, and then it goes all your Google Plus pages. Because I already have multiple pages. So when yes. I click on it, it takes me to them, and then I can add a page. Mm -hmm. But some people don't have that, all your Google Plus pages. Yeah, so it's sort of like chicken or egg.
All right, so this, uh, I wish I had a better answer for you. This is what happens when big uh, corporations change, right? We, uh, we suffer. But um, the, the thing is that some of you have, on the top right corner of your icon, you have all my pages. Some of you don't. I'm gonna, we're going to take a break in a moment so I, can, so I can look that up. Because it looks like it'll say all your pages if you've created a page. But how can I create a page until I have that icon? So I have to look that up in a moment. If you don't have an icon like this, just pay attention for a moment and, and take notes, and then we'll take a break in a moment, and I'll figure out what to do here in a moment. My point is that if you do have the button that says all your Google Plus pages, click on that. And on mine, for example, it's showing me all of these other company pages I'm managing. And then on the bottom right, I have a little plus symbol to add a brand page, a company page. So if you do have this, go ahead and click on it. If you don't, just wait a moment. We'll figure it out. But click on the plus, add a brand page. And it's going to ask us to create a Google Plus page because we've got the personal profile and the brand or business page and the reason you do want the business or brand page it gives you different features that the personal doesn't such as analytics which is the fancy term for statistics it will tell you when I posted this picture how many people saw it how many people shared it you know all of this extra information that the personal profiles don't give you that's how you can tell how effective you're being, how effective you're posting content. So again, I apologize if you don't quite have it. Remember, I'm recording this lecture, so if you're missing something, you'll be able to watch the video. But let me move on for the moment. We'll take a break soon, and then I'll help people. It's asking for a page name. This could be the name of your company, your brand, your band, your nonprofit organization, whatever you're trying to do online. So let's say I have a company called Victor's Bakery. So I can type the name of my page there. What's the website of my Victor's Bakery? If you do have a <coughs> website, you do want to fill this address in because, again, the whole point of social media for business is to drive traffic to your website. You might say, well, what if I just spend all my time on Twitter or Facebook and Google Plus and such? Do I need a website? Usually the answer is yes, you still need a website because at the moment you can't accomplish some very important things on the social networks. You cannot accomplish, for example, selling products. At the moment, you can't sell products via Twitter. You cannot sell products via Twitter. You cannot sell products on Facebook. You cannot <coughs> sell products on Pinterest. Walmart can and Amazon can, but we're not Amazon size yet. <coughs> So for the moment, the little person cannot sell products on social media. You have to sell on your website or on <coughs> Etsy or eBay or whatever. The point is, I still think most people, uh, most use cases are that you will still need a website because that's where you're going to build your inventory, <coughs> your checkout system, your subscription system, your newsletter, etc. You're going to use these networks as advertising as marketing to get traffic. If you don't have a website, take my class on how to make websites. Type of page. Is this a product or brand? Is it for entertainment? Is it a community or other? Not too many to choose from, but we should be able to choose whatever works. I'm going to go with product or brand. Victor's Bakery. There's a check mark. I agree to the page's terms and I am authorized to create this page. This is saying that you are able to make changes to this content, that you do have access to it. So go ahead and click Create Page. It might ask you to verify a phone number. Um, I don't believe we can skip it, so it's either going to make a text message to you or a voice call. 
the point of this, you might think, this is very intrusive. Google's going to know my number. Well, this is for security. You've been hearing so many times nowadays, Target got hacked, uh, Walmart got hacked, uh, Home Depot got hacked, whatever. Um, Cybersecurity, very important. It's very easy for anyone to create an account for free on Google+, on Twitter, on Facebook, and impersonate another company. If you provide a phone number here, uh, an automated message will be sent to you at the moment to confirm that it's you. Because what's to stop your competitor from creating a Google Plus in your name and trashing your reputation? This. But it's going to go to your official phone number. I have a question. What yes. About, uh, sometimes they say if you set up this you know, computer, you trust the computer, so you don't have to put on a telephone number. It's the same thing. That, if you click it as a you know, trust the computer instead of text messaging. That's related to it, but not exactly. Here it's asking for the phone oh, okay. number to, to create the account. Yeah. The other is to log in. Um, so go ahead then and put a phone number here. And actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a break just to make sure we're, we've got this done. Again, this is always the big speed bump in this class, creating the accounts. And then when it's created, we'll, sh we'll see how to use them. So let's take a break. Try to finish creating this. Uh, step outside if you need to. The reception here is often terrible. Uh, and we'll take a 10-minute break. It's about 7.05. We'll be back at 7.15. Try to create the account. Call me over if you have any trouble, and then we'll proceed.